favourite books, The Cool Bean. G'day, I'm Harry, your EWPS Vice Captain for 2021. Today I'll be reading you one of my favourite books, The Cool Bean. Watch out, here comes the cool beans. The cool beans. Oh yeah, check out how they move. Look at the way they swagger. Notice their sunglasses? Yo! The cool beans are known all over school, from house to house, across town, beyond country lines. In the olden days, last year, we were all one big pot of beans. We were a mixed bag, but somehow it worked. Yep, those were the good old days. And then we all stopped seeing each other as much. That's just how it is sometimes. You spend less time together, even though you're not totally sure why. I watched as the beans I knew so well the beans from my own pod became the cool beans. Oh, they were so cool. One of them could play the guitar. Cool. One of them could draw the best superheroes. Cool. One of them could jump higher than any bean I ever known. Cool. Me? Well, I mostly said the same. Sure. I made some small changes. I wore sunglasses. I slicked my hair back. I strutted around. I swaggered. I was still picked last for everything. My clothes never seemed to fit. I snorted when I laughed. I walked into stuff. I was an uncool bean for sure. I started thinking of myself as just a common bean with no special skills. I couldn't compete, so I didn't even try. I'd never be a cool bean. It seems like there were two types of beans in the world. There were the cool beans and the beans like me. The days all blended together. I lived my life and things were just okay. I took tests and ate lunches and mostly kept to myself. The cool beans continued being cool. I mean, sure, I miss them a bit. But it's not like I was going to say anything. I felt like all that coolness had gotten into the way of our friendship. And that's how it went, until one day. I was in the cafeteria. I dropped my lunch on my loafers. But then, something sort of a miracle happened. Out of nowhere, one of the cool beans helped me clean it up. He didn't say anything. He just gave me a nod. That was it. Later, I was out on the playground. I tripped and scraped my knee and maybe cried a little bit and everybody saw it. Another one of the cool beans came to my side and without a word he dusted me off. That afternoon I was sitting in class. I wasn't really paying attention. I didn't notice what our teacher caught had called on me. Everybody stared. I sat there in silence. Nobody said anything. And then, then, everybody just laughed at me. That was it. After the day, I was officially a has-been. But then, one of the cool beans stood up and came over to me. Everybody watched. She leaned in close and whispered, Hey, the teacher asked you to read from page 32. Then she gave me a quick wink and went back to her seat. It was a small gesture, 
sure, but it was also everything. I walked home with a goofy smile on my face. I smiled all the way through dinner. That day made all the difference. It was a day that could have been really bad, if not for the kindness of a few cool beans. It gave me a shred of confidence. That shred of confidence has continued to grow. Somebody had my back, or a few somebodies. After that, I started hanging out with the cool beans again. Not all the time, but sometimes. At lunch, after school, even on the weekends. Throughout all of this, I realised that it's not about how you look or any of that other silly stuff. It's about a wink or just a nod or a smile at just the right moment. It's about dusting somebody off, helping them up again and pointing them in the right direction. You need a hand? Yes, please. Now that's cool. Thanks for reading The Cool Bean with me. Wasn't that a fabulous book? It's not my unicorn. That's not my unicorn. Its ears are too soft. That's not my unicorn. Its hooves are too bumpy. That's not my unicorn. Its tail is too furry. That's not my unicorn. Its wings are too smooth. That's my unicorn. Its horn is sparkly. Hi, I'm Cash Peak. I'm in the West and I'm just reading you who sank the boat. Beside the sea, I miss the person's place they live. A cow, a donkey, a sheep, a pig and a tiny little mouse. They were good friends, and one warm sunny morning, for no particular reason, they decided to go for a row in the bay. Do you know who sunk the boat? Was it the cow who almost fell in when she tilted the boat and made such a din? No, it wasn't the cow who almost fell in. Do you know who sank the boat? Was it the donkey who balanced her weight, who yelled, I'll get it? the bone before it's too late. No, it wasn't the donkey who balanced her weight. Do you know who sunk the boat? Was it the pig as fat as butter who stepped in at the side and caused a great flutter? No, it wasn't the pig as fat as butter. Do you know who sunk the boat? Was it the sheep who knew where to sit to level the boat? so that she could knit. No, it wasn't the sheep who knew where to sit. Do you know who sunk the boat? Was it the little mouse, the last to get in, who was lightest of all? Could it be him? You do know who sank the boat. Thank you, and that's me reading Who Sank the Boat. lived in a teapot. It had two bedrooms, a bathroom, a kitchen and a living room and it suited Mr Funny very nicely. One day Mr Funny was having lunch. He wasn't very hungry so he only had a sandwich and a nice glass of toast. Delicious, he murmured to himself as he finished his funny lunch. After lunch Mr Funny decided to go for a drive in his car. Mr Funny's car was a shoe. Have you ever seen a car that looks like a shoe? It looks very funny. As he drove along, everybody who saw them laughed to see such a funny sight. He passed a worm at the side of the road. The worm thought Mr. Funny in his funny car was the funniest thing he had ever seen. He nearly laughed himself in two. He passed a pig in a field. The pig thought Mr. Funny in his funny car was the funniest thing that she had ever seen. She nearly laughed her tail off. 
Even the flowers he passed thought that Mr. Funny was the funniest thing that they have ever seen. They nearly laughed themselves out of the ground. Eventually, Mr. Funny came to some crossroads. He didn't know which way to go, so he looked at the signpost. One of the signs said, To the zoo. That will be fun, thought Mr. Funny to himself. So he drove his shoe towards the zoo. When he arrived at the gate of the zoo, he stopped. It was closed. I'm sorry, said the zookeeper. We've had to close the zoo because of all the animals have colds. And they're all feeling very sorry for themselves. Oh dear, said Mr. Funny. And then he thought, perhaps I can help to cheer them up, he said. Well, said the zookeeper, it's worth a try. And he opened the gate. Mr. Funny drove into the zoo in his shoe. The first thing he saw was an elephant. It was true. The elephant was feeling very sorry for herself. Very sorry indeed. Mr. Funny stood and looked at the sad looking elephant. And the sad looking elephant stood and looked at Mr. Funny. Oh dear. Then, do you know what Mr. Funny did? He pulled a funny face. Mr. Funny, as you'd imagine, is very good at pulling funny faces. The elephant giggled. She'd never seen anything so funny. Mr. Funny pulled another funny face. The elephant burst out laughing. The elephant laughed and laughed and laughed. She laughed so hard that she nearly laughed her trunk off. And she felt a lot, lot better. Mr. Funny went over to the lion house. There was a lion feeling extraordinarily sorry for himself. Mr. Funny stood and looked at the sad looking lion. And the sad looking lion stood and looked at Mr. Funny. Oh dear. Then Mr. Funny pulled the funniest looking face that's probably ever been pulled anywhere ever. Now you've heard a lion roar before, haven't you? Well this lion roared too, with laughter. He laughed so hard that he nearly laughed his whiskers to pieces. Then Mr. Funny went around to see all the other animals in the zoo. Oh dear, what a miserable looking lot. For all of them, Mr. Funny pulled funnier and funnier faces. The big brown bear giggled and then burst out laughing. And the giraffe laughed so hard she nearly laughed her neck into a nut. And the hippopotamus nearly laughed himself out of his skin. And the penguins nearly laughed their flippers floppy. And the leopard, well, you really should have seen him. He laughed so hard that he nearly laughed his spots off. What a pandemonium. Oh, Mr. Funny, giggled the zookeeper, who had started laughing as well. Oh, Mr. Funny, thank you very, very much indeed for coming to cheer us all up. Oh, it was nothing really, replied Mr. Funny modestly and drove off in his shoe. Later when Mr. Funny arrived home, he chuckled to himself. Well, he said, that's the end of another funny day. And he parked his shoe and went inside to his teapot. And because he was feeling thirsty, he made himself a nice hot cup of cake.